Good morning and welcome to a bit of a dingy old winter's morning. It's not one of those lovely crisp blue sky kind of mornings. It's um, it's not a very inspiring sort of day, I have to say. I've got to do all the usual things. Um, there's a uh, gym to go to, parcels to pick up. I've got to try and get Thomas uh, a skateboard as his Christmas present because uh, I bought him one a little while ago, but it's absolute rubbish. It, um, I can't even ride the thing. The wheels don't spin, the bearings are rubbish. Uh, so I need to get him a, a half decent one for Christmas. I've also got to um, update you, update you about my um, regen findings, my very unscientific test. So I'll, um, I'll tell you all about that later. Uh, and also uh, Tesla and um, Direct Line, it's a car insurance company here in the UK. Uh, they've come to a bit of an agreement and um, ultimately it looks like it's going to reduce the price of car insurance. Uh, and this is all to do with autonomous driving. So um, I'll update you on that later on as well. Well, the weather hasn't changed, but I've been to the gym and that's certainly brightened me up no end. So um, I'm heading over now to the um, the skateboard shop to see if I can get Thomas a skateboard. Uh, but it does mean lunch on the go today, I'm afraid. But while I'm heading over to this skateboard shop, there's something that caught my eye in the news, which it's kind of, it's almost slipped under the radar. And I'm not sure why, because I think it's, uh, it's quite significant. And that is that um, Tesla and Direct Line, who, as I said before, a um, insurance company here in the UK, they have um, come together, and Direct Line are going to offer the owners of Tesla cars who have the autopilot features uh, a discount. Uh, and they're saying that is because, uh, first and foremost, they believe that the cars are safer, but. Um, also to allow them to do some research into actually how much safer are they. One of the figures that really interested me was, um, and I don't know how accurate this is, uh, and I'm, I'm going to hazard a, a guess, this probably came from Tesla, but they um, have decided or they've come up with a figure that those people who drive Teslas that have autopilot features in them, and I think we're talking about the, the latest one, are 40% less likely to have an accident than those who don't. And it's my opinion that, you know, if you put a, a computer in charge, it's got to be better than a human being. And I know there's lots of what ifs, and I know there's lots of questions about, you know, well, what if somebody stepped off the pavement on one side and the car swerved to avoid them, but there was somebody on the other side of the road, who does it choose? Who does it crash into? Or does it sacrifice you as the driver? Yeah, you know, we could play out these what ifs all day. That scenario is exactly the same, whether it's a computer dealing with it or a human being behind a steering wheel. At least with a computer doing it, A, it doesn't get distracted. B, it never nods off. Uh, C, it learns. It doesn't just learn from itself. It learns from every other vehicle that's driving. So uh, that uptake of knowledge is that much better and that much quicker than a single human being. And finally, as far as human beings are concerned, we cannot react as quickly as a machine. The first thing that any human being will do is flinch. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be the, the highest trained martial arts person in the world. If something takes you by surprise, the first thing you do is flinch. After that is where training and experience and you know, know how will then kick in. What do you then do with that flinch to put right that situation? Okay, a flinch is a flat fraction of a second, but when you're traveling at 70 miles an hour, a fraction of a second is a long way. Well, a computer doesn't have that flinch. The computer sees it and instantly is able to react. So based on all of this, it is my opinion that uh, autonomous driving and um, having cars uh, take a certain amount of the driving from you, and ultimately probably all of it on an autopilot, has got to be safer. Yes, there's things to be ironed out, but it's safer. And um, it's nice to see that insurance companies are starting to recognise that. And um, not just kind of winging it, but actually working with companies like Tesla, who are kind of, at the moment, I would say market leading. They are actually pushing their stuff out on the road onto consumer vehicles, not just testing. Um, nice to see them, these insurance companies working with them and come up with some real data from the roads to make some real educated choices and decisions and um, on the back of it a discount of insurance 
and hopefully that will continue and hopefully uh, that will be recognised throughout the industry and um, we'll all end up with cheaper insurance. Well, I stopped off on the way to see if I could find um, that skate shop. Either I was imagining it or it's closed down because I couldn't find it anywhere. Now, the good thing about coming here while I'm going to pick this jumper up is they have got uh, a couple of charging points. They're standard, if I'm honest, I think they're probably three kilowatts. Uh, so I'm not going to get a lot out of it. But that said, uh, with a little battery, you always take every opportunity you can to get some charging. And it's free. And parking next to her, there's something you don't see every day, a Vauxhall Ampera. Right, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do much filming out there because this place is blaring with Christmas music and I'm um, obviously copyright, I can't have that on YouTube. So um, I'm going to plug in uh, and whiz around the shops and I'll give you an update when I get back and I'm away from this music. Well, I have to say that was a reasonably successful trip out, barring the, um, getting the skateboard. Actually, I got everything else done that I wanted to. So that's good news. So I can now talk to you about um, what I think about using uh, B and D or regen and no regen uh, and kind of my experience over the last five days. So historically, I've always driven with Eco On in B mode, which is, as far as this Nissan Leaf is concerned, it's the um, hardest regen it does. Uh, it's not by any stretch of the imagination um, one pedal driving as they call it but um, you know it, it, there's definitely a difference. I wanted to um, try and see if what I had read on some of the forums was um, true that um, a lot of people say if they drive in D mode actually they get better economy from their car. So that's what I've tried and I didn't want to just do it over a day because you know it it's quite a different way of driving and um the main kind of difference i've found is the the planning the planning ahead about when you want to come to a stop so it's it's almost it's akin really to driving a petrol car historically you really have to look ahead and think about um what the traffic's doing what the road's doing and you have to lift off an awful lot earlier using acceleration sense and you almost kind of drift into those hazards when i say drift i mean the speed's coming off but very slowly so i've kind of had to relearn that way of driving again which um which has been interesting it's taken me a few days to get to get used to it to be honest and um now i am used to it I, i'm i'm doing it all the time which is great um I guess the big question here is, has it actually made any difference to my economy? Well, I have to say no. Uh, I haven't seen any difference whatsoever. Uh, there may be a marginal difference, but not enough for me to really have noticed it. Now, most of my driving has been on uh, B roads and around towns. Uh, normally, if I'm on a dual carriageway or a motorway for any distance, I will go into D mode anyway. So. Um, I don't think that would have changed anything at all. I personally um, will, do prefer using B. Uh, and the reason I prefer that is because I feel like you have more control, um, kind of immediate control, if you like, over the car. Uh, and it might go back to, certainly before kids, I used to ride motorbikes. Uh, kids came along and I had no time to do it. It was a, uh, the last one I had was pretty much a toy that sat in the garage. and. Um, once Thomas came along, it never got used, so I had to sell it. But that's an aside. The reason I bring that up is because uh, when I rode motorbikes, I always preferred a V configuration. And it wasn't just because I liked the sound of the exhaust, uh, I liked that kind of roll on, roll off that you had. And um, I think that has transferred across to um, driving a car for me. Uh, I like to be able to um, plan ahead, but when I lift off the accelerator, I actually feel the car braking. and. Um, it just I feel like I've got more control over it and for that reason I am going to switch back to using B again so um so that's kind of my findings but what I would say is uh, if you haven't tried one or the other give it a go and don't just give it a go for a day persevere with it for four or five days 
and then make your own mind up. You might surprise yourself because um, it surprised me how much I have enjoyed doing it. Uh, as I say, just not enough for me to change to it. Well, I've given myself just enough time now to uh, nip home, grab a coffee, uh, sort the car out before I pick up my father-in-law and we're both going out to watch this um, nativity that Thomas is in. So um, it seems like quite a convenient spot to wrap up the vlog for today. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon. Take care.